I think me and Natalie were separated at birth. Yeah. You have these moments and you're like, damn, like I made my family proud. I remember getting my ass beat for the first time by my dad. Girl. So I'm just kind of like, you know, I, I got to work hard. I got to mm -hmm. do what I want because if I want to live in somewhere like New York, <laughs> I got to have the money too. We're practically family. I talk to your mom a lot every time you're on FaceTime. Yeah. I swear I'm like, hey, she's like, hey, Maya. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you know what's so crazy? <clears throat> I get really excited and I feel bad, but I get really excited when I talk to other people's like family, not mine. Why? <laughs> like when I'm like my friend Natalie, crazy story. I think me and Natalie were separated at birth because... So, or like, I don't know what, but me and Natalie have the same middle name, Nicole. Mm -hmm. Natalie and my mom have the same first name. Okay. And then I was like, okay, this is kind of weird. And then like, when you look at it, MN, Natalie, Nicole, mm -hmm. Maya, Nicole. And I'm like, what is going on? Like, <laughs> were we supposed to be like related or something? And then we have one other friend in our friend group. So it's Maya, Nicole, Natalie, Nicole, and Jada, Nicole. Oh wow! And I was yeah, like, should, like, do some, like, start a little group. We said we were gonna start something, but a, a we don't know what it's gonna be. <laughs> but then, like, the Nicoles. I feel like somebody already has that on TikTok or something, but <laughs> why not? But um, how did, how are you with like your family? Like, I'm very close to my family. Mm -hmm. I'm very family oriented. Um, yeah, they're very supportive of me. Yeah, they're my big support system. Um, yeah. <laughs> how's, how's how's you and your family um <laughs> i'm really good with my family especially like my mom well i feel like okay so to say about like like the tight-knit family you got me my mom my brother and his wife that live together mm -hmm. um and we are very close but everybody has like their own like personalities okay. like very big personalities so we're like for me I'm always, like, I want to be by myself when I'm in the house. Like, mm -hmm. when I want to be bothered, I want to be bothered. But if I don't, yeah. I don't. But my family was very supportive and very helpful when I had to move to New York. Mm -hmm. Like, when, obviously, like, we found out my dad passed, I had to, like, call my mom. Even though me and my mom, like, bump heads a lot, mm -hmm. she doesn't realize she is, like, my best friend. Like, she's the one person that mm -hmm. I call and, like, I talk to about stuff. Yeah. Even though, like, I do get on her nerves a lot because I have mood swings like there is no tomorrow. And I yeah. pray for the guy that dates me and marries me because <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, but my, me and my mom are, like, she's, like, my best friend. I call her for everything. Like, mm -hmm. when my dad passed, I called her. And I was, like, something's off. Like, this is weird. And she was, like, no, like, it's fine. Or yeah. whatever. And, obviously, we found out she's in New York. Mm -hmm. The first thing I did, I called my brother. Obviously, I'm screaming. I'm crying. Yeah. And I'm, like, I didn't even care about me. I was like, check on mom because I was mm -hmm. like, she's at work. All, yeah. Like I've, my mom's been working there since I was three. Mm -hmm. So like everybody was like, you know, oh my God, like this is weird. They've known my dad for so long. So they were like, what the heck? And as much as like it hurt me, I know it hurt like my mom, my family, because my brother and my dad was close, even though that's not, you know, his mm -hmm. son. But like, it's, it's so strange to see like what death can do to a family. Mm -hmm. And... There was a lot of things that changed, but within those four people, we became very close and they supported me throughout like everything because even like my graduation, like I really didn't even want to go because I was just yeah. like, nobody's really coming or whatever. But the people that was meant to be there came and like, I wanted to cry, but like, I just, I don't know. I just couldn't because I just mm -hmm. felt like. There was just a lot of stuff that happened in between, like, him passing and, like, me graduating. Mm -hmm. And then even after that, like, over the summer, it was yeah. like, okay, like, I just felt like, you know when you have, like, no time to just process? Yeah. I literally still haven't had that. Yeah. Where I can actually sit down and, like, process the whole situation. I'm mm -hmm. still, like, moving, like, 30 miles a minute. And yeah. I'm like, well, one, hopefully one day I can actually sit down and, like, relax and be like, oh, like, this is everything that happened and actually, like... Mm -hmm process it but like when it comes to my family especially those four they are generally my support system especially like my mom um and i feel like family is supposed to be hard on you yeah for sure like my brother is definitely that person mm -hmm. i feel like we spoke about this when he was here yeah. like he is like so hard on me but like i feel like you need people like that especially yeah. in your family so i think it's a blessing that your family stood together yeah. the way 
they did with your father's passing yeah. because a lot of the times families separate because of death. And I've, yeah. I've seen it personally in my family. Yeah. And thank God, you know, my family have, you know, figured out their ways and stuff. And mm -hmm. they became, like, because my my family was separated at some point. Not like my immediate family, yeah. but like my relatives and stuff or whatever. Because of, you know, like just deaths that happen in the yeah. family and stuff. You know, like, especially when a grandmother passes away. When a grandmother passes away, everything changes. Yeah. Everything. And um, I'm grateful that my family figured out their issues. And, you know, we all speak again or whatever. But mm -hmm. that does happen a lot where um, yeah. deaths happen and families separate. They don't mm -hmm. talk to each other no more. And everything becomes different, you know. So I think that's a blessing that you have your you yeah. know, family like, like that. Yeah, that immediate family, like, we're cool for sure. It, it's definitely taking time for, like, my dad's side of the family, like, for us to really, like, be cool. Like, not be cool, but, like, yeah. kind of, like, get on the same page. Um, and, like, I we're getting there. I could tell, like, even for yeah. Christmas, like, I was over there for, for a longer time than I usually mm -hmm. am. And I felt a lot more comfortable being over there. And, you know, it definitely started to feel, like, better, like, whatever. And I know, like, I'm in Long Island and they're, like, in Brooklyn. So... Sometimes I don't want to, like, drive mm -hmm. or whatever. And I don't know. It, it does suck a little bit because, like, I want to have a better relationship with them. But I feel like right now it's good where it's at. Like, yeah. we're taking it slow. We're, like, processing it or whatever the case may be. And, like, you know, my grandmother has, like, she lost her son. Yeah. Like, I feel like that's a parent's worst nightmare is, like, losing mm -hmm. their kid before them. Yeah. Or, like, did I say that right? Like, yeah, their mm -hmm. kid dying before them and stuff. So it's, like, I know, like, there's days where she'll call and she's, like, you know, like, I just want to talk to your dad. Mm -hmm. And, like, you try to be strong for them. But you're, like, trying your best, like, yeah. not to go through it. So I'm, like, okay. Yeah, and that's <sighs> one thing, too, like, with, with death when it comes with, like, you know, losing a parent or losing mm -hmm. a, a son or a daughter, you know. those That grief remains in you forever. Yeah. And that pain is always going to be with yeah. you. So you just really have to be there for your family, mm -hmm. you know, and have, you know, you know, your family be there for you as well. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. The worst part, I think, for me, especially being, like, at the age I am now is, and I, I never really thought about it as much as I, I kind of did because I was like in a relationship at the time, but that father daughter dance that I'll never get when I get mm -hmm. married, ugh, that hurts me like one, like that right there. But I already like kind of came to terms with like what I would do and stuff. Mm -hmm. But just the thought of like, damn, like, cause I always had, I gave him like a picture frame um, for Father's Day and it was like, um, like, uh, one of my friends did it for me. And it was, like, like the Spotify thing where you can, like, scan it and stuff. Yeah, yeah I did that for him. And I told him, like, this will be the song that we dance to for, like, when I'm getting married. It was, like, First Man mm -hmm. by Camila. Cabello. Yes. It, yeah. Bro, that song is my song. Yeah. So, like, it's, like, you already had it in your mind. Like, you know, you can't do it or whatever. But my dad, I would say, like, one of my biggest supporters. Like, mm -hmm. the reason why I went to college. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Mm -hmm. Like, he was definitely the person where I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, like, I have to finish. Because I was yeah. going to drop out and just call it a day. But in the back of my head, I'm like, he would he would come back yeah. and get me. So I was yeah. like, no, like, I got to finish. And, yeah, it was a struggle. But I knew, like, I was even looking at, like, some of our old messages and stuff. And mm -hmm. it was like, you know, he would text me in the morning. He's like, I'm your number one fan. Like, you know, oh, just having, like, yeah. that support system and stuff. Like, I have a, my my immediate family as well. But my dad just had, like, that, like, yeah. pinch of, like, you know, like, he just knew, I feel like, being a girl's dad, he knew how to, like, hey, like, this is how, like, I have to speak to you for mm -hmm. you to understand that, like, I'm not trying to get on you. Yeah. I'm not trying to be an asshole. I'm mm -hmm. just trying to, like, get you to understand yeah. that this is, like, you need to push yourself. Right. Because your parents just want the best for you and yeah. stuff. And I think even too, like parents, you know, they see mistakes that they made or mm -hmm. maybe like they didn't have the chance to go to school and yeah. stuff, whatever. So they want that for us mm -hmm. as well, you know, and give us, you know, that chance to have the opportunity yeah. and stuff, you know. So I think even for me, like I'm a first generation like Period. student. So like, you know, none of my family members went to college mm -hmm. and stuff. So they always pushed me to go yeah. to college and stuff. And even like. To like talking about like grief and like um passing and stuff. Like my grandfather passed away mm -hmm. and like before he passed away, he would always say, like, go to school. Cool. Go yeah. to school. And I wasn't in school at the time. Yeah. So it's like now that I am in school, I'm like, I know I'm like making him proud and stuff. Yeah. And I know that like my family will be proud and stuff. Mm -hmm. So when going to school and like graduating and stuff, like yeah. you have these moments and you're like, damn, like I made my family proud. You yes. Know? It's it's such a surreal moment, especially like when you see your family like 
I think for me, when I look at my family and I'm like, I want to be able to like not have them worry. And mm-hmm. that's something that I get from my brother is like my brother takes care of so many people mm-hmm. in my family. And I feel like a lot of people don't realize that like the, this man is taking care of basically everybody like Dev yeah. is taking care of generally everybody. And that's generally something that I want to get off of him to where like, don't you don't have to worry about me. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll take care of my dad's side of the family. Like, you take care of mom and your wife and the family that you're going to have. Yeah. And like, you know, stuff like that. Like, I think that's one of my biggest goals is just to be able to have one less of a burden on him. And I know he just doesn't see it as a burden. Yeah. Most family don't. They're like, you're not a burden. Like, your family is like, yeah, yeah, it feels like it. Right. Um. So for me, like, that's definitely a goal that I have is like, okay, like, I can generally just go do my thing. Like, he doesn't have to worry about me not spending money or me spending yeah. too much money. Like, right. he's like, I know Maya's good. That's yeah. always something that my brother always told me. He's like, all I want is so that you, I could be like, I know Maya is good. I know yeah. she's okay. I know she's doing her thing. That's why, like, you know, I push so hard to do what I need to do or whatever or call who I need to call or, you know, get these internships and stuff. So. Yeah. Cause I don't wanna don't wanna live in my brother's house forever. Yeah, I've I've been by myself in a sense of like I had my own apartment when I was in school, um, when I was at App State and stuff like that. So coming back to like being under somebody else's roof has always yeah. been like, damn, like I don't wanna like I don't yeah. wanna be on be under somebody else's roof. But it's like I'm very grateful. Yeah, because I don't think I would have the money or whatever to live by myself here in New York. Yeah. Because the Especially way this here. Money, what? Yes. The way I be seeing these apartments, I'm like, literally, it's like a box and I'm paying two yeah, two thousand yeah. dollars a month and you want me to literally turn there's my kitchen, turn there's my room, turn there's my no. Right. Like, and I think that's my problem too, because I'm always like, Oh, I don't wanna leave New York. Yeah. Which is like there's times that I hate New York, mm-hmm. but then I'm like, Oh, I don't see myself leaving because I'm just very much like a city girl. Yeah. So I'm just kinda like, you know, I, I gotta work hard, I gotta mm-hmm. do what I want because if I wanna live in somewhere like New York, <laughs> I gotta have the money too. Literally. And then even to like going hard for for my family like because mm-hmm. like you said like you know you we see our family do so much for us or yeah. whatever, and you know that's just like a goal like it's like wow like my parents took care of me yeah i want to be able to give them back one yeah day. you know i want to give it back to them one day and like you know like even seeing people like buy houses for their parents, parents yeah. like that's one of the biggest goals yeah. like that's it's so amazing to see like mm-hmm. just see your parents happy you yeah know? to see them like where they don't have to like worry about anything and stuff. Like I always said, cause my, obviously my dad had stuff of his own. So he was like, oh, I don't, don't need anything. Just yeah. graduate college, do what you gotta do. But like, even thinking about it now, like I know that my dad would have loved to see like what I'm doing, but also like, and I, I feel like I said this before and it sucks to say it, but like, I don't think I would be here if he was still alive. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think I would have came to New York and like, started like the podcast with you like yeah. got into um entertainment and stuff because the mm-hmm. way that my dad's thought process was like you're you need a job to make money to live yeah that's it like mm-hmm. there wasn't like yeah he cared about your passion and stuff like that but you need something so you can live right. okay yeah so when i would talk to him i'm like okay like this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a good check every month or whatever. I did like what I was going to do when I was in North Carolina. Um, but then I came up to New York and it was just a whole nother ball game. And I was mm-hmm. like, bro, like, this is amazing. Like to be mm-hmm. in sports, being entertainment. And my dad like was in that field. Like he was in music. Yeah. And I was like, damn, like this man was in sports and he was in music. And I'm just like, okay, like I have like, you know, mm-hmm. I have that. I have a little bit of him in me. So, and I came to New York and I was like, like, in my head, I was like, God, if my dad didn't pass, like, would I be, like, would I be in New York? Yeah. I don't think so. Mm-hmm. I genuinely don't think so. Yeah. And I'm just like, I'm very grateful that my family are the people that they are. Mm-hmm. Because I always look at, like, other people's families and, like, people that I'm around and how their children treat them. And I'm always like, oh, I'm so happy that my mom raised me the way I did. Because, like, how do you feel about, like, the kids that treat their, like, mom or dad? Which, obviously, I I never know the backstory. Mm-hmm. But I do have, like, a situation where, like, um, amongst my mom's, like, friends group, friend group or whatever, or friends where, like, there's just, their, her kids just, like, 
treat her like crap. And I'm yeah. just like, and I'm just telling my mom, I, you better, listen, I'm happy you do not have kids like that. Because it's like, you know, you work with people. Yeah. And then you see how other people's kids treat their parents. And you're like, how could you do that to somebody that mm-hmm. raised you? Yeah. And, and it's then like. When like that person's gone, they don't, they don't realize it until afterwards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, you, what would you do without your mother? What would you do without your father? Like, mm-hmm. and like I said, I don't know people's situation. I don't know if like your mom left you when you were younger and then she came back or like, yeah. what, like, I don't know the situation, but from what I've seen from people around my circle, it's just like for you to talk back to your mom or like, mm-hmm. you know, like curse her out. Like how could like, or your father, like how could you do that? Mm-hmm. Like I remember getting my ass beat for the first time by my dad girl <laughs> my dad was not the type to want to beat me but yeah. my mom she was gonna put her hands, hands on me yeah <laughs> she, she was gonna beat me yeah but my dad he was so scared to like put his hands on me because you know it's like that yeah. father thing like i don't want her to think that this is okay for a man to right. put his hands on yeah. her but like my mom was on the phone and my mom was like she needs to get her ass beat <laughs> and you need to beat her yeah and he did and he felt so bad oh my god that's like, my dad all the way <laughs> my dad like he's never like put his hands on me like ever but like he like i asked him about it before and he was just like that's i can't he was like i just can't like i can't do it yeah. and he's a he's a type that if he were to do it like he would cry after. He, yeah <laughs> <laughs> my dad was literally he came in the room he was like are you okay i'm sorry and i was like, <laughs> mom was like don't apologize to her she needed it and i'm like and I, ever since then, I made sure I didn't make my dad mad. Like, yeah. I was just, like, very, like, my mom, like, I give her attitude here and there. I'd be like, girl, like, what? <laughs> and she'd be like, I will whoop your ass. And yeah. like, you're absolutely right. Like, my mom, I'll never forget this moment. And it's like, and I say this because I feel like this is, these are things that made me the person that I am today. Yeah. So it's like, my mom, I remember, like, I was giving her attitude, like, when I was younger. And this lady decided she was like take all your clothes off and i'm looking at her like excuse me and she was finna beat me butt ass naked oh my god and i was looking at her like you're crazy she didn't do it because i was like i was like this i was like no 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 no, absolutely not i was like i'm sorry but like i definitely tested the waters with my mom a lot more than i did my dad right but as i got older it was like my dad saw like how independent i was and i think he definitely like did his best um to just make sure, like, you know, I'm doing the right thing or whatever. Uh-huh. I'm on track. But when it came to, like, support, I would definitely say my dad My dad tried to put me in everything possible. Yeah. He was like, we're going to figure out what you like mm-hmm. because I, we need to figure this out. So yeah. I did literally everything you could think of from volleyball, basketball, um, freaking information technology. Like, mm-hmm. I just, I just kind of put my foot in a lot of things. Yeah. And... I always said, I always ended up back at the YMCA with like kids. Yeah. I don't know why. Like, it was just always a thing where I'm like, okay, like, yeah. I like, I really like the kids or whatever. And I seen them like grow up. So, like, I was at first working with like Pathfinders, which is like third and fourth grade, and then like kind of like got up to teens. And I was mm-hmm. just like, wow, like these kids grow up. Like, by the time I came back, like one time, um, they were like 13, 14. And I'm sitting there like, Y'all are old. Yeah. They're like, no, you're old. I'm like, not too much. But yeah. I think it's even like amazing to add to that too. Like, you know, like being there for those kids who never getting them into stuff. Yeah. Because, you know, kids, they need to get into stuff because if not, they'll be running the streets yeah. and like getting into things that they shouldn't be getting yeah, into. Yeah, exactly. So even you being an asset to the YMCA and mm-hmm. being able to be there for those kids as well, you know. So just like, you know, your dad, like, pushing you to do those yeah. things and everything. You use it for, like, other things. Like, mm-hmm. your family, especially if they're a positive, like, asset to your life and yeah. stuff. Your family is there to, I personally feel like, if, if in my situation, my family was there to be very supportive and very, like, hard on me. And I never looked at them being hard on me as them hating me or not liking me. I saw it as like, oh no, they want the best for me. They want to make sure that I'm doing what I need to do to be where I want to be. Right. And I saw this like, I think it was a TikTok and this girl was talking about how like this lady, she was talking about how there's some people in this world that don't, that generally don't want to do anything with their life. Like Mm -hmm. they're good. They're satisfied with where they're at. Yeah. And that that's just them. Like, that's fine. 
I'm not that person. Mm -hmm. And I feel like my family was never like that. So, like, also, I've noticed when you're around a lot of creators, yes. you want to also create. Right. It pushes you. It pushes you to want to do more. So being around my brother, Dev, and being around his wife and my mom and stuff, I'm just like, damn, like, they did a lot to get to where they want to be. Like, Momo mm. pushed pushed to get out of nursing school. Yeah. Dev pushed to be a musician, an entrepreneur, and all this other stuff, and, like, look where they are now. And then we go over to, like, you know, Full Core Studios. That's where we're at today. <laughs> um, and, like, all the people that, like, we're around, you're like, you can't be around these people and not do shit. Right, exactly. Like, yeah. when you surround yourself by the family, the friends, like, you can't, because they're going to look at you and be like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, let's go. We need to get it. So yeah. just being around, like, the family where, like, they're willing to be like, no, you need to get up. Yeah. You need to do something. Like, yeah. not even getting it. I'm like. Yeah, okay. I think for me it was like the opposite. Really? Yeah. So like my family, you know, like they're not into those things. Mm -hmm. So like you know, it's regular just nine to five jobs yeah. or whatever and stuff. So, Which is also okay. Stop saying nine to fives are not okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like for me, like mm -hmm. me being into creative stuff or whatever, that's not normal. Whatever, yeah. You know, like I would say, like my brother, he's some he's somebody that's into creative stuff or mm -hmm. whatever. So he was like my backbone for me. Yeah. And even like growing up or whatever, like, you know, he was the one pushing me to do stuff mm -hmm. and I didn't want to do it. Yeah, I was the opposite. Really? Yeah. I oh was I was the person, you know, like like I said, I failed high school. <laughs> like I was terrible in high school. Yeah. And he was the one like pushing me, like, no, you need to get into something, whatever. Yeah. Like he even tried getting me into sports and stuff. Really? And he's like, You need to try basketball, well, you need to yeah. try this because he's he's one where he's like a big sports person. Yeah. Whatever. He's like, You need to try all these things or whatever. And I'm just like, that's not me. Yeah. And I was out here failing, you know, classes and stuff. And my brother was like, What are you doing? doing yeah. Like what are you doing? Like and I look back at it now and I'm like, he was right. Like the yeah. whole time. So shout out to my brother because my brother, <laughs> no, you know, real. he's really like so supportive yeah and he's one that he really pushes me to do things or whatever and stuff and especially like you know being that our family doesn't come from that creative side or whatever yeah. he's like you know it doesn't matter what anybody says he's like yeah. do what you want because mm -hmm. you never know who you could be and you could do yeah. anything that you put your mind to that's why I, I think about it and i'm like sometimes like what we were talking about like the internships that i can get which mm -hmm. is totally fine um I always, I get into these modes where, like, I question everything I worked for. Mm -hmm. And it's, like, you got this far. And it's, like, damn, like, so is this, like, not something, like, should I be in sports? Should I not be in sports? Like, what I, yeah. and it sucks because, like, when you start questioning, like, certain things, that's where, like, you know, the devil just starts working a little bit. Because mm -hmm. it's, like, oh, okay, you don't have that much faith in, like, what you're good at or your success right. or whatever and what you can do. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I've been to a point where, like, there's been a lot of no's in my life. And yeah. that's, like, I've got I've come to terms with, like, that's okay. Because, like, at the end of the day, people, not everybody's going to like you, like we spoke about. Like, not mm -hmm. everybody's going to like you, not everybody's going to want you. But just understand that, like, you have to understand your worth just like your family like mm -hmm. understands what your worth is yes if like, you believe in yourself you can yeah. do it because you could get a thousand no's and you get that one yes yeah like you could look back at so many people that are successful now yeah they got told no so, so many, many times, times but they still push through yeah. at the end of the day and i feel like that's a big thing like when you have family that supports you the no's don't mean that much mm -mm. because you have a support system where it's like yeah, like, they said no. And my brother be like, okay, that means you got to work harder. Right. And sometimes some people can't take that. And I'm not going to lie. There was a point in my life where I could not yeah. take that, where it's like, well, you just got to work harder. And it's like, I am I am working. Yes. I am doing the best mm -hmm. I can to get to where I want to be. And it's like, my brother's one of those people where he's not going to, like, pat you on the back. Like, mm -hmm. not a, he's not going to do that. He's You got to work harder. Yeah. You want it that bad? Mm -hmm. You got to work harder. To where when we started the podcast... I literally didn't tell him until we recorded the 10th episode. <laughs> like, we recorded, I th no, we f I think we recorded the first four or five. Mm -hmm. And then I showed him. And I was like, hey, this is what I want to do. Yeah. This is the idea that I have. Because if you come to Devon Terrell with no freaking plan, mm -hmm. that man's going to be like, what do you want me to do? Yeah. It's an idea. <laughs> and I literally sit there and I'm like. Right. Like, if you're not. If you have no blueprint right. to show him. It's just words at that point. Yeah, because he's like, I want to see it happen. I want to <laughs> literally, he'd be like, I want to see it happen. And I'm like, 
I mean, this is the thought I have. Mm -hmm. Literally, I came to him. I was like, I had gotten the um, design done and everything. And I was like, okay, like, this is the idea I have. I said, here. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I really hope he, like, fucks with it. Like, I really Mm -hmm. do. And he was like, oh, I can see this and this. And I was like, yes. (laughs) I was like, okay. Like, you know, it's, it's always a good feeling when, like, the people around you see the vision. Right. And you're like, they're like, oh no, like I can see that or whatever. And yeah. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not the best at, best at explaining mm-hmm. certain things. So whenever I talk, I'm like, I get a little nervous. I'm like, yeah, so like, uh, 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 yeah. So the fact that my brother could understand mm-hmm. what I was trying to say and him like, no, nah, like you can make this. And I'm like, peace up, A-Town down. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was very, very happy that like, mm-hmm. I'm not gonna lie, like my brother is one person that I make sure not make sure that I I like having validation from mm-hmm. um, because he's seen a lot in his life. And I know, like, he would never steer me the wrong way. Yeah. I know he would never sit there and be like, Maya, like, n- like no, just do what you want to do. Like, he would mm-hmm. not never steer me the wrong way. Like, he would be like, if this, I've, do you want to do this? You got to mm-hmm. work at it. So even, like, a few days ago, he was like, um, what did he say to me? He was like, if you really want to do this, like, you got to do it. Like, you yeah. got to work harder. Because, like, I was getting, like, people not answering my emails or whatever. Yeah. Cold calls. And he was like, you you got to work harder. I, and it's like, <laughs> you know they're right. Yeah. But it's like, bro, mm-hmm. I'm trying. Yeah. And it's great to have those people in your life that yeah. influence you like that, too. Because even, like, you saying, like, you know, you're growing up, you're seeing mm-hmm. your brother doing these amazing things and stuff. And yeah. that pushes you and stuff. And I think for us now and, like generations after us and stuff like we're gonna be the people that influence other people and that's why for me like I always make sure that like okay this is gonna happen for me this is gonna and it's gonna be something where I could influence people Mm -hmm. in the younger generation yeah like I have a niece I have two nephews I have younger cousins and stuff like I want to be the example to Mm -hmm. them so that they could feel like damn like I could do it you know I think that's always needed especially like with the, the with the younger generation it's like we're so worried about what everybody thinks of us yeah um and i'm not gonna lie there's days where i feel like that too where i'm like oh like i don't like the way i look or like i know that i need to create content on my personal page mm-hmm. and i'm like well i don't like the way my hair looks yeah. i don't like the way my makeup looks i don't like the way i look right now i could be bloated and i'm like no i'm not doing it mm-hmm. so just the fact that like in my mind because social media is such a big part of a way to make money Mm -hmm. um and how i can use the like i can generally like we can use that platform to do so many things endless things Mm -hmm. and it's like i don't want to because i have times where i'm afraid to post because i don't know what people are going to think about it Mm -hmm. and it's like these next generations like we have to be able to get them to acclimate to don't worry about what everybody's going to say. Because mm-hmm. if everybody likes it, that's a problem. Yeah. It's it's going to be... A, it's, if, if everybody's sitting there telling you, I like it. It's amazing. It's lovely. Blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. You get no hate. That is a yes. problem. I remember somebody commenting under our podcast on like the shorts that we do. And they were like, um, I don't understand why you even created a podcast. And I'm not going to lie. Oh, I wow. laughed. I literally laughed. Yeah. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> I look, but I got a view out of you. You watched right, it. Exactly. So I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, like that's fine. Like if you don't like it, that just means it's not for you. It's not meant for you yeah. to look at. So when I see those, I'm like, but that's because I have a brother who literally goes through that from his music to his podcast to his day to day life yeah. to where he has people who don't like him. Yeah. And he has to generally sit there and be like, I'm not going to look at the comments. Right. Me, I'd be like, what y'all <laughs> say? Sometimes I'd be like, damn, like, you know, but then I'm like, y'all don't, don't even, y'all are hiding behind a screen. Yes, those are people that don't do nothing. Like yeah, that. I'm like, okay, <sighs> like, cool, great. Like, do do what you want to do. Mm-hmm. But I just feel like I I really do, especially when I decide to start a family. I'm still young. Yeah. Um, But I'm also, like, in my 20s, so that, mm-hmm. you know. But um, even with me, when I start a family, like, I would love to have, like, certain traditions. Like, yeah. With my family, like I said, with even my friends, I want to, you know, go to Friendsgiving and do that with, uh, and maybe call it family giving. I don't know. Yeah. Um, or even to where it's like, it's not even the husbands, it's just like the girls and the kids. Like, mm-hmm. something like that to where, like, our friends can kind of get together and just kind of, like, cherish those moments. Yeah. Um, and I just think it's such a good thing to just have also those friends who become family. Yeah. 
And I just feel like when you have that support system behind you and they really want to see you progress and do the things that you want to do, like, you'll succeed in the long run. Like, mm -hmm. you'll succeed because you will not care with any what anybody else thinks. Yeah. The support system, the support box that you'll have, that's what you're going to be the most worried or concerned about. You're not going to be worried about the family that doesn't want you or the family that doesn't care mm -hmm. or got something to say. Because when you succeed... Oh my God, look at my niece. She's doing yeah. so well, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Like, okay. Right. Like, like, where was the love then? Where was the love when yeah. I had to crawl? Yeah, I think, you know, just like families, like they just struggle to see it because mm -hmm. they're like, okay, you're starting something. And they're for a yourself. different generation. Yes, exactly. Especially the older generation. Yeah. They look at it as like, is this going to make you money? Like, yeah. This is what you want to do. <laughs> like, unless you're famous, uh, yeah, I don't see it happening. Like, okay. You and know. then you give them a check for a million dollars. You're like, Oh my God, like, yeah. where did you get this from? Mm -hmm. The content that you said that wasn't going to work, it worked. it worked. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's why That's why you have to go so hard. You have to prove people wrong, yeah. you know, and stuff. And sometimes there's family that they'll be your worst critic. They're going to be your, critic. They're gonna be your worst critic. Yeah, unfortunately, know? which I yeah. understand, but it, it definitely does suck. And I feel like that's where people got people got to start creating a backbone yeah. for their self, where it's like, when you have friends and family who like, you can they can give you constructive criticism and you could take it yeah you need to be able to have a very good backbone because not everybody's going to be able to say yes mm -hmm. and say that they like it people are going to tell you your family if they care about you yeah they're gonna be like mm, i don't like that yeah i don't and it's like okay what would you tweak and then you kind of that's where you right. kind of and if they don't have a are. response then do what yeah. you're doing because they're just saying it because they don't mm -hmm. see the numbers right they don't now. see the numbers and sometimes there's families who don't see the vision they need to you need to work a little more for them to see, like, what you're doing. I think that's a big thing, too, in, like, Hispanic culture, mm -hmm. too. Anyone who knows this, like... Really? They would, like, they don't... They see as, like, if you go to school and stuff, you got to have a something that that's going to get you money. Yeah. That's going to promise you something. Mm -hmm. Like, they look at stuff, like, when it comes to creative stuff, like, they'll look at it as, like, what... That's, what is That's this? nothing. Like, yeah. what are you doing? Like, why are you doing that? Whatever. Oh like, any... God. Yeah. Damn, I didn't know that. Yeah. I don't know. With it's very big in Hispanic culture. I'm glad that, like, my family, they're, yeah. they're very supportive and they're not like that. Mm -hmm. But in Hispanic culture, they're like that. Damn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I did not know that. I feel like mm -hmm. black cultures, we seem to be, we just, I feel like we just compete with each other a lot. Yeah. Like, I feel like there's always, like, somebody always has to be, like, one up. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that a lot where, like, there's a whole bunch of creatives and like they don't like each other and I'm like why like why like yeah. or that like we're supposed to be uplifting yeah each we're supposed other. to be uplifting each other we're in the same industry so why can't we collab why can't we make content like mm -hmm. I remember like you know reaching out to people and I get it it's like where um Alicia was talking about like people want like uh you have to be credible mm -hmm. and it's like well I have to be able to you know show you that i'm credible i have to you know it's i'm not gonna have thousands of followers or whatever the case may be like you know sometimes you have those people that like to be on the back end mm -hmm. and you know but we make things happen yeah and i always say like my family has always told me be nice to everybody that is one thing my dad always mm -hmm. said is make sure you're just nice to everybody because you just never know who you might run into mm -hmm. and i i've had situations where people were rude to me or whatever mm -hmm. And all for me, it's like, oh, I would just never work with you again. Yeah. That's fine. Like, if I see you again, hey, how are you? I'm a very cultural person. But just mm -hmm. know, like, th I would never. And I always say, like, you just also never know where I'm going to be in life to where you might need me for something. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like for you to, you know, put this bad taste in my mouth. It's like, mm, OK, that's that's what you want to do. Great. Mm -hmm. Cool. But when it comes to family, I'm just like, I'm happy that. I have a good support system. And for the people that don't have a support system within your family, um, something that I would say is, I listen, find it in friends. Like, it's okay to... Sometimes mm -hmm. I feel like people put this, like, stamp on, like, oh, family over everything. Look, they say blood ain't always thicker than water. Yeah. So you just never know if you don't have... If you feel like you don't have a community within your family find it you're you might have to just find it somewhere else and it might be tough it might be difficult but you know you're you can find it 
you will find it in friends, you will find it in coworkers. I feel like a lot of people, that's how me and Victoria met, we were mm. coworkers first. Mm. And now we're really close friends. Like she's been over to the house. We lit all the time. Like <laughs> so it's like you just have to find you have to unfortunately go out and find those friends, those coworkers and stuff. And you'll meet people who want the best for you and you'll realize that like yeah. these are the people that are gonna support me. You might show them a video and be like, they'd be like, yo, you made that. That's dope. Right. That's instant. That's how you know, like, oh, like, they, they're they cool. Yeah. They fuck with me. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you just, you, you'll find it. So don't yeah. don't worry too much. And if you are in a household that, like, you feel like you are unsupported and you feel like you can't speak up, that, that's, ugh. It, it is tough to even say, like, f maybe honestly start journaling yeah. Um. Found a, find an outlet if you are not in a place to like talk to them yet. But sometimes too, you can even put in that into your work. Mm. Let mm. let that put it in like yeah. you know like give you the motivation to want to go harder. Yeah. It's like I'm gonna prove them wrong. Wrong. You know? Exactly. So if you if you generally feel like like damn like I don't feel like I have the support that Victoria and I are talking about like you know I personally didn't always have the support or whatever. Um, from my entire family and stuff, but I have, you know, certain people in my family who like I can call or I can relate to and stuff like that. And usually it's the ones closer to your age. Yeah. Um, usually the family members that are closer to your age can understand, you know, what you're going through a little bit, a little bit more. Um, so don't worry too much about it. Like you'll yeah. always have those, those family members, hopefully that like, you know, support you and that respect you. Um, and if not, you know, find it elsewhere. And like I said, blood ain't always sticking in water. Mm -hmm. So always remember that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But my three pieces of advice, because I'm going to forget. Um, when it comes to like family being supportive and like just being having a support system, um, support is not always going to be in your family. So like I said, find it elsewhere. Um, learn how to love yourself. Um, because I feel like there's some times where we want love from other people, but we don't tend to ourselves first. Um, and family will always obviously be there or whatever, but just be mindful that like, you also need to really love yourself or whatever. Um, and support comes from, I don't, let me see. Support. Oh, if you're gonna, if you want support, support. Because you can't, tell somebody like oh well you didn't support me when was the last time you supported them so like mm, i feel like one. if you're gonna if you want the support you need to you need to support and that doesn't mean that doesn't always mean money like i always tell people like with the podcast i literally just send it out to people and it's like you can like comment like comment whatever share it that is literally free so like you'll realize because as soon as this podcast starts getting like 100k and 10k or whatever that's when people are gonna be like oh my like victoria so if you are gonna support people or if you want people to support you support them back okay please because mm -hmm. you can't ask for support if you can't give any support um i would say a little bit similar to what maya said um i must say don't expect everyone to support you yeah there's always gonna be that one person that doesn't like what you're doing yeah um and two, if you feel like your family is being a little too hard on you, just understand that one, they want the best for you. Yeah. And two, um, you know, push that. Um, mm -hmm. Make sure you go harder with it. Yeah. You know, if they're not understanding what you're doing and they don't see the work you're putting in, just know that one day you're going to make them realize. Yeah. You know, so um Definitely just go hard with your work and stuff yeah. because your family, your family is going to come through once yeah. they see the results. And, and um, sometimes that's what it takes. Results. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like they, especially the older generation, they need to see results. That's all they know. Yes, they because don't, they don't believe in this whole yeah, like <laughs> generation. This process. Yes. Like they don't believe in starting a YouTube channel yeah. and like doing, you know, all these other things. So, <laughs> yeah. So just trust, if you trust the process, that's fine. They just need to see the end result, okay? Yes. Just make sure you're working. Yeah, make sure you're working. Because sometimes people don't. Sometimes people be lazy too mm -hmm. and think, "Oh, my family's hard to me." No, you're mm -hmm. actually really being lazy. Yeah, your family you wants the best for you and trying to tell you what it is. Yeah. <laughs> like get up. Mm -hmm. Like if you hear your family like, "Oh my god, you don't do anything," blah blah blah. Like, what? Listen, 
reflect. Yeah, reflect, reflect on yourself. Reflect yes. on yourself for sure. If your family is like, you're not doing anything, blah, blah, blah reflect on it because there might be a possibility like damn like am i doing enough like yeah. am i doing anything at all so just think about it you know but thanks again guys for being with us on the 101 podcast the podcast that has everything and nothing to do about college um and of course i'm your girl maya and of course i am here with victoria um yes. but make sure you like comment and subscribe um and follow us on instagram tiktok youtube and then our personal instagrams as well we don't really post but hey yeah we're getting there we're, we're getting trying there. <laughs> okay we're really trying um and if you are listening audio wise i hope you have a great day a great night and that you know you can kind of relate to our stories and where we're coming from so yeah um see you in the next episode period <laughs> bye bye